a presentation of HBO Sports. Hello again, I'm Jim Lampley. Coming up November 22, HBO Pay-Per-View will take you live to the Chinese gambling community of Macau to see a fighter you almost certainly know well, Manny Pacquiao, against a fighter about whom you just might know nothing at all, American Chris Algieri. A funny thing happened on the way to Macau for the popular Siberian Rocky Ruslan Privodnikov, needing only a qualifying win over a credible opponent to put himself in position for a lucrative date with Pacquiao, Provodnikov searched in vain for a recognizable name before settling for a relative unknown, 30-year-old licensed nutritionist and former kickboxer Chris Algieri. Algieri's only calling card was an unbeaten record against mostly unknown opponents, mostly forged in front of his hometown fans in the North Shore Long Island town of Huntington. This time he had to travel to Brooklyn. And less than a round into the fight, he already had been decked twice and had his right eye slammed shut by Provodnikov's thunderous left hooks. But as the rounds progressed, Algieri gradually became more elusive, more confident, more effective with his own fast hands, fast feet, and precise, intelligent style. Let's go back to the night of June 14 at the Barclays Center in Brooklyn to see how the drama played out, as I called it, with Andre Ward and Max Kellerman. Guys, we went over the instructions earlier. Obey my commands at all times. Protect yourself at all times. Touch gloves. Good luck. Provodnikov is a beast. And Algieri is going to try to tame him. The more civilized this fight is, the better it is for Algieri. But who's better in boxing right now at turning fights into uncivilized spectacles than Provodnikov? The boxing death of civilization. Provodnikov's trainer, trainer of the stars, Freddie Roach, hoping to make it two triumphant weekends in a row here in New York. Last year, when Provodnikov won this title by beating Mike Alvarado in Colorado, Roach was in the Philippines training Manny Pacquiao. And his now reasonably well-known assistant, Marvin Simodio, was the lead trainer for Provodnikov in that fight. Their chemistry worked very well, as does the chemistry with Roach. We saw that in the Timothy Bradley fight. And Provodnikov gets in a right-hand whack to the body and then takes a jab upstairs as Algieri begins to unleash that long jab. Something to keep in mind is Provodnikov is cut in the past, so Algieri doesn't necessarily have to land a devastating shot if he keeps that jab pumping and stays out of trouble. But Provodnikov's already cutting off the ring extremely well, Andre. Yeah, Provodnikov's not wasting any time. He's doing exactly what he said he was going to do, and that's get right to work. Algieri buys a little real estate by coming off the ropes to grab Provodnikov and move him back. And now he gives the real estate away again momentarily, was pinned against the ropes. Provodnikov got in a little left hook. Now there's some distance between them. Algieri gets to stick that jab again. I like what Provodnikov is doing. He's very crafty. With an agile fighter like Algieri, you don't shoot for the head early. You start, you start at the body because the body's not moving as much as the head is, and then the head shots will be there just like that. Down goes Algieri on a Ruslan Provodnikov left hook, and Algieri's right eye appears to be damaged by the shot. And that eye's gonna swell fast. First time Algieri has tasted the canvas as a professional boxer, and it happened two minutes into round one. Freddie Roach's imprint all over this fight. When you give him an aggressive, shorter fighter like Miguel Cotto or Ruslan Provodnikov, Second knockdown. It's a thing of beauty. Algieri goes down on a right hand. And I don't believe his right eye has recovered yet from the left hook that put him down on the first that shot. That eye is a problem. It, it's swelling rapidly. You can see it swelling. So two knockdowns already in the round for Provodnikov. And give, this could be quick. You could give Algieri three eyes. I don't think it would make a difference. Like I mentioned earlier, Provodnikov is starting down low and he's finishing up top beautifully. Algieri was very confident in our fighter meeting yesterday. Seemed to have a very strong sense that he was going to be able to upset Provodnikov's apple cart here tonight. The first few body punches may well have changed that perspective. Provodnikov means business. Algieri's still fighting with some confidence. He's just being overwhelmed. 
physically. <laughs> round one is a 10-7 round for Provodnikov. And there's Algeria's brother Michael, befuddled, as you can see, after round number one. Meanwhile, for Freddie Roach, the last two out. round you ones have on, produced baby. five. You don't worry about this. Yo, give me the bucket. Give me that spit bucket. Deep breath, Chris. Deep breath. Oh, I know, I know. I know you're good, baby. Come on, deep breath. Deep Take breaths, Chris. Come on, spit this, spit this. Good, deep breath, deep breath. Okay, Chris, I need you to change your movement a little bit. Let's go to the right a little bit. Okay. okay? Listen, listen. <clears throat> the body shot is there. Off the first knockdown, we see Provodnikov get in here, land kind of a funky right hand behind the head, and I'm sure it threw off the equilibrium of Algeri. Well, that was as much Algeri taking a knee as going down as the result of the shot. He was just feeling the pressure again, and perhaps reacting somewhat to the fact that his right eye was already swelling shut. Is a cold inswell going to do anything to help that right eye, Andre? I think it can tame it. I think it could probably slow down the swelling, but it's not going to stop it. What I've seen from Provodnikov since the Bradley fight is, you know, the, the, the prevailing sense was that Bradley fought the wrong kind of fight against Ruslan Provodnikov. I'm not sure that if they were had a rematch, Bradley would be capable of fighting a different kind of fight. Provodnikov forces you into his fight. He cuts off the ring. He attacks with ferocity from the opening bell. That's true, but I think in the, in the Bradley fight, I think when Timothy wanted to box and really got on his jab, the level that Timothy's at and the caliber of fighter that he is, he showed that he can give Provodnikov some issues, but you're right, it's not an easy thing to do. Outbox Agreed. Do you think Provodnikov has gotten even better technically since then? Because against Alvarado, he forced Alvarado to brawl even when he didn't want to. No, I agree with that. And I think the Timothy Bradley fight has given him more confidence to continue to do what he's doing. And, and he's showing it tonight. He's, uh, he's not hesitating. He's gotten right to business. Algeri doesn't look scared. This is how he fights. He moves a lot. He just can't do anything with Provodnikov right now. Let's take a listen to Michael Algeri as he talks to his brother. Move more. Boxing well. Much better than in round one, but he did a little dance after that most recent left hook, too. So, Provodnikov's power is still showing up at the moments when he's able to catch Algeri and land the shot. Provodnikov has landed some violent two and three punch combinations that Algeri is definitely feeling. It also shows you that even if you do everything right and you follow the game plan, if you don't have the power to keep the other guy off, if the other guy is simply a more talented fighter, there's not much you can do to win the fight. Algeri is doing everything right right now. And he knocks Provodnikov's head back with a jab there. Crowd responds appreciatively. No shortage of heart from Algeri right now. Another left hook lands for Provodnikov. Algeri getting out of the way. Sir, you're using the jab a little bit more and get a little bit closer. Sir, please, 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 please,
Chris, collarbone, collarbone, okay? Let's go, guys. Nice. Deep breath, deep breath, deep breath. Deep breath. Deep breath. You caught him with two Hockey right. box numbers in round it's two. Provodnikov, 11 of 53. That's a Provodnikov pace. Algieri, 24 out of 92, including 10 of 59 jabs. Getting off 92 punches, landing 24. Small victories for Algieri's game plan, which was to flood Provodnikov with greater punch count, move on his feet, try to limit the number of times that Provodnikov could get to him with power shots. It all came a cropper in round one when Algieri went to the canvas twice. But you know what Algieri was able to do last round? Turn it from a battle of will into a battle of skill. And it was more the kind of fight that favors him. Freddie Roach's response was to tell Provodnikov, use the jab a little more so that you can get closer when you land those big shots. And Provodnikov, listening to Roach, is firing the jab and then coming back with the body shots. The only problem is Algeria has to keep this up for another nine and a half rounds. Well, a little he, grin on Provodnikov's face. Algeria's well conditioned, and this is the kind of fight he knew he had to fight coming in. Left hook lands upstairs for Provodnikov. Algeria with a solid right hand. Provodnikov walks through that. Algeria takes the most punishment when he stops on the ropes. His best bet is to keep his feet moving or keep the fight in the center of the ring, and that's easier said than done, but he's got to identify that. Good body shot by Algieri to another little grin from Ruslan Provodnikov, as if to say, oh, you like to fight? I love to fight. Algieri said he recognized there'd be moments in the fight where he had to fight Provodnikov often. And he's doing that here when Provodnikov starts to get position on him. Algieri is coming in with two and three shots. Algeria's right eye still seems to be swelling shut. Could ultimately affect his ability to see Provodnikov's left hook. Tough enough fighting for providing a call for two good eyes, much less one eye on its way to close. And Algeria is acquitting himself very well in this fight, I think, so far, Andre, even though he's taking punishment. No shortage of heart. Uh, he's fighting another level of opponent in providing a call, but he has a kickboxing background. He said he's been in tough fights. He's been knocked to the canvas. Not in a boxing ring, but a kickboxing ring. And he's showing his, his heart tonight. Good hard right hand by Algeria left the mark on providing a call's cheek. Good body shot by Algeri as well. Algeri's He's showing his skills. Algeri boxes very well. He's just not a big puncher. But he's sharp. Stop, stop. Stop. Hey, keep it clean. Keep it clean. All right, let's Deep breath, baby, deep breath. Deep breath. Spit this. Spit this. Fours and fives. The fours and fives are there for all fucking days. But you need to stay lower on your punch. You need to rinse his damn neck. neck. You need to remember you're aiming at his neck, not up top. And back on your jab. Every combination of the punch and the punch. Three punch domination. Quick, quick, quick. Three punch domination. Quick, quick, quick. Not one hit. Okay. 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 Yeah, boy. Classic case of the volume of punches, Algeri versus the quality of the impact, Provodnikov. As round four begins, we go to our unofficial ringside scorer, Steve Weisfeld, to see how he has it so far. Jim, I have it 29-26 for Provodnikov. Two knockdowns in round one, that's a 10-7 round. Second round, Algeri landed more punches, but Provodnikov landed the harder punches. Third round, Algeri boxed very well and landed hard punches at the end. So after three rounds, I have Provodnikov up by three points. You know what Algeri did in the last couple rounds? He's made Provodnikov think, Andre, and there's a little hesitation when Provodnikov gets position. And in that hesitation, Algeri comes with two and three shots. And in, in, in doing that, he doesn't have to be a major you know, puncher. Like you said, he's just got to touch you hard enough to get your attention, and he's getting Provodnikov's attention right now. Oh! 
Hard body shot by Kravatnikov drives Algieri back. It's a big left hook from Algieri. Mm -hmm. I'm impressed that he won a round on Steve Weisfeld's scorecard. I agree with Steve. Well, I think there's a formula there by which Algieri could get back into the fight. And how about this kid getting beaten up like that in the first round by a heavy favorite and coming back and boxing the way he has so far? Very impressive. And I mentioned it in the beginning of the show that I didn't know or I hadn't seen Algieri show these kind of intangibles that he's showing now. He has those intangibles. Regardless of what happens in this fight, he's showing a strong performance right now against a very, very tough and durable fighter. Amazingly impressive, frankly, for a guy who took up boxing at 23. Now the kickboxing gave him a combat sport background, and he actually won a world championship in kickboxing. But by and large, the conventional wisdom is that you can't come into boxing at 23 and deal with somebody like Kravotnikov, who's been doing this since he was a kid. Algieri is an extremely confident guy and never let Provodnikov beat that out of him, even as he was on the canvas. I think this is all you can ask for, for a fighter, somebody who comes in here and gives it all he has, regardless of what the results are. Everybody doesn't have the same skill set, but Algieri's showing you, this is what I have, and I'm putting it all on the this, line. Uh, and never stop trying to win. He's still trying to win, and the last couple rounds been doing much better. You have to respect that. In this round, Kravotnikov's doing a little bit better job of making Algieri miss. And not waiting as long to go to the body, especially when he gets positioned. The right hand by Algieri. Hard body shot by Kravotnikov. Algieri lands upstairs. time you creep on him, he, he stops. Listen, I want you to creep on him, Chris. Creep on him, step over to the right, he'll let you hit him. Listen, creep over on him and tap boom him. Listen, you hear me, Chris? Yep. When you go in, he'll look for you that way. So then when he looks for you, hit him, okay? okay? So listen, creep and move, move. You know, you know which way to move. Yep. Chris, we don't creep and go this way, okay? okay. So creep him right away, you got him. Yep. Deep breath, deep breath, deep breath. Chris, again, stay low on your fours and fives. Hey, when you slip underneath off the ropes and you get to the center, back his ass up too. Let's go. Deep breath, deep breath, deep breath. Algeria has the kind of swollen eye where in the movies you would see the cut man take a razor blade and, uh, me, and let the blood out, right? A little disappointed in the first 30 or 40 seconds in Algeria's corner. They didn't get the end swell on there. They got to keep that on there. They got to stay aggressive and not go to sleep because that eye staying open, or at least partially open, may be the only shot that Algeria had. It was like they gave up on the eye, I thought, Andre. Like they just figured, oh, it's closing. It's, or it's closed. A very strange. One thing that may be operating in Provodnikov's favor here, there was considerable debate before the fight about the size of the ring. And uh, some observers felt that this ring was as small as 18 feet by 18 feet under the regulation 20 feet and the smaller it is of course the greater advantage to Kravotnikov the power puncher. I want to point something else out about Algeria. Not only is he boxing well and, and, and has overcome an enormous obstacle early in this fight but and fights and is fighting with one eye now but he's not the kind of boxer in spite of his light power who's, who's uninteresting to watch. He's an entertaining fighter in spite of the fact that he's not a knockout guy. Doesn't tie his man up a lot, stays in punching range, uses his legs appropriately, throws a lot of punches, and throws like he means it. Oh, against an opponent that he can control, Algeri has generated 100, 110, sometimes 120 punches per round. His hand speed is good. 
and he's in tremendous condition. And to your point, Max, I think what's interesting and exciting about Algeria is he gives you different looks. He's not doing the same thing every round. One minute he touches you, and he hits you with the left. Next minute he's flicking the jet. He's doing several different things, and it's exciting to watch, but it's also keeping the big puncher providing the call just off balance enough where he can't do what he wants to do. Yeah, I'm really liking watching him box. And I think Provodnikov is taking away some of his big shots because when he corners Algeri, he waits just long enough where Algeri can escape looking for the big shot. Provodnikov has to get him in position and let his punches go. Algeri's long arms are a bit of a problem for Provodnikov. Algeri's greater hand speed is a bit of a problem for Provodnikov. The multiplicity of his punches showing up, his ability to throw in combination. The difference, of course, is that every once in a while, Robotnikov's able to trap him against the ropes and hammer him to the body or sometimes to the head with very hard shots, the kind of power that Algeria just can't match. Although I have to say, Algeria has been taking those shots extremely well, especially considering he was decked in the first round. Leading from the right nostril now. Are there when you creep he doesn't do anything uh -huh. he just looks for you to let go or grab on all right so chris creep on him and give me the left left okay all right Stay or low, chris. just hit the liver off the creep okay hit the liver off the creep right up on the top top bottom chris top bottom good chris when you tap in Two punches. Okay? Yeah. box numbers through five rounds. Chris Algieri's throwing 87 punches per round. He's landing about 25 of them. 28% connect percentage for Algieri. Pretty good. 124 out of 437. Provodnikov, 84 out of 284 sledgehammer shots. Sometimes as a fighter, we talked about the first round knockdown. Sometimes when you get hit with a good shot early or you get knocked down, it's almost good in a weird sense because your body computes it and you get hit with another big shot and you're able to stand, stand up to it. Wonder how long New York Commission doctors are going to allow Algeria to continue with that right eye. We saw that, I think, in Cotto and Martinez last week. She saw earlier tonight on the Riviere. Cotto came out and blitzed Martinez early, but after that, Martinez took the punches much better as the fight wore on, even though he was eventually stopped. A few minutes ago, Algeri snuck two nice short body shots down low on Provodnikov's body, and he didn't look like he liked that. Who likes it in the body? Nobody. Provodnikov missed a few moments ago with a wild swinging left hook that would have knocked Algeri into next week if he had found the target, but he didn't. Algeri's more accurate as the fight progresses. Do you think that this performance by Algeria is going to make some other fighters brave about Provodnikov, Andre, that he can be outboxed? I think so. I think when that aura is kind of tainted a little bit, it gives other opponents that, that just enough confidence to either give you a tough fight or possibly beat you. So this isn't the Provodnikov that people are used to seeing, and I don't think many people expected this from Algeria, but you got to respect this guy. No amateur background, former kickboxer, He's showing himself strong tonight. Already beat Emmanuel Taylor in his last fight. And, Jim, I think Algeria's going to beat some good fighters before he's done, even if Ruslan Provodnikov tonight is not one of them. Well, Provodnikov was quite outspoken in saying that he wanted to fight Juan Manuel Marquez. He wanted to fight Brandon Rios. He wanted to fight a bigger name. He was disappointed that he wound up fighting relatively unknown Chris Algieri. But Algieri gets the chance to make a name for himself with his courage and his skills in a fight in which he was knocked down twice in the first round and his right eye was closed by a stinging left hook. Good body shot by Provodnikov. Algieri's punch output has seemed to slow this round. Seems to 
me. Although CompuBox has counted him landing 31. I think not he's still out working Provodnikov, though. Yeah, but not quite the snap of the last couple rounds. Good left hook by Provodnikov. Right on that eye, which has been so badly bothered since the beginning of the fight. Time! We're halfway through. <laughs> Deep breath, baby, deep breath. Nice deep breath. See the success off that there? Off that, off that grab? Got it. See how when you creep on him, Chris? You feel me on the creep? Yep. Okay, now give me the left, left. A nice tap, a nice short tap, boom, off that creep into the right, okay? You need to stay low on your hooks, Chris. You need to dip out off of that. Stay low. He's looking just to unload his left when you're throwing yours. Stay low, right hand high. Okay, Use both hands. All good, baby. Seen okay? All good, baby. That's a no. Chris, I need you to use both hands, though. You gotta stop throwing one punch at a time for a second. Chris, the creep was beautiful. He doesn't know, he doesn't know what to do with that. Mix it up from the outside to the inside, okay? Copy box numbers show you that Algeri has outlanded Provodnikov in every round of the fight. Landed 34 punches in that last round, his high number of connected punches in the fight. Steve Weisfeld, how do you have it through six? Jim, I have it 59-53 Provodnikov. To some extent, you have the judge's dilemma. Algeria is boxing very well and landing more punches, but Provodnikov is applying relentless pressure and he's landing the bigger shots to the head and body. So after six rounds, I have Provodnikov up by six points. Now Algeria in this round, Jim, seems to have a little snapback on those shots to me. So I think his confidence is rising. I think that, and there's a hard left hook by Provodnikov that could affect that confidence, but I just have the hunch that in the last couple of rounds, Algeria has gotten more encouraged with the notion that somehow he could climb back into the fight on the scorecards. Steve Weisfeld, would you be shocked if one or more of the official judges had given three or four of these rounds to Algeri because of his activity. Jim, not at all. As I said, it's a judge's dilemma, and Algeri is clearly landing more punches, and he's boxing very, very well. I just went with Provodnikov because his punches are harder, and they seem to have more effect. Yeah, especially when a guy's face is falling apart and gets hit with shots like that. It's easy to think, yeah, but I'd like to be the other guy here, but Algeria is doing a lot of good work in between those moments for Provodnikov, and now it looks like Provodnikov's right eye is giving him problems. Well, he blinked a couple times. Provodnikov almost has a look on his face, as if to say, you're not supposed to be here, it's round seven. Solid right hand shot by Algeri. Countering Provodnikov's left hand. You heard Tim Lane in Algeria's corner saying, stay low. He's trying to reach you with that left hand. If you can duck underneath it, you can come back to the body. Their body's hurting. And we're listening now to Tim Lane, body's hurt. Body's Algeria's hurt. trainer. Body shot by Provodnikov. Pressure, pressure, pressure. Oh, that, that right hook to the body, Jim, that you mentioned, seemed to take a little something out of Algeria right there. Trapped in the corner with 10 seconds to go in the round. Algeria slips away. Stayed low under the left hook. But that eye looks awful. I think they need to go to work on that eye immediately and stay on the eye, work on the eye the whole one minute hurt. in this rest His body period. is killing him, yep. okay? Nice deep breath. You see what you're doing when you're spinning him? Hit him right off that motherfucking spin. It's beautiful. What you just did was beautiful, Chris. Yes. That right, you use both hands, baby. You gotta yeah. get yeah. 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 both hands, hands okay? Chris, yeah. you look up hands. at me. He's all good, baby. All good, baby. Yeah. Nice deep breath. Get some grease on him, George. 
when you're throwing it, like he look, he's looking, every time you go no, take to the body, yeah, yeah. he's looking to come over the top. Put, put that in well with that. Deep breath, is it? Seconds out, fellas. Stay loose, quick, quick, quick. Play short punches. Play deep to New York, so slow. I'll mention the name of the referee, Harvey Dock, because there's been absolutely no reason to mention his name so far. Harvey Dock staying job. out of the action and doing a sensational job. Sensational. Just terrific. Young referee rising. Robotnikov almost went down. That would have been a feather in Algeria's cap. And that was, you know, Robotnikov got hit when he slipped. Yeah, we got to watch that replay. Not acting like he's hurt, but maybe Algeria here should take another shot, Andre, see if he is. I think that's been his best shot. He's, I think he's buzzed uh, Provodnikov a couple times with the left hook when they've traded. I don't know who got the worst of it, but I know he's gotten Provodnikov's attention with that left hook. I think Algeria's getting the boxing world's attention with his performance so far. Yeah, this is what you call rising to the occasion. You know, nobody thinks you're going to do it. And he's made up his mind that tonight's going to be my night. Remains to be seen if that's the case. But you can't argue with this performance. He's taking some punishment, but he's giving just as much as he's getting in terms of volume, the volume of punches. He's in his home state. He's got a lot of hometown fans here. To get off the deck twice against the guy, or to get off the deck in the first round against the guy who's supposed to butcher you who's known as a guy who finishes fights, and to do this so far, very impressive. And Provodnikov, by the way, has kept that pressure every second of the fight. But as the rounds have gone on, Provodnikov has found it harder and harder to land his big stuff upstairs. Might be useful for Provodnikov to focus on the body for a while and 100%. try to break Algieri down. Well, he started that in the first couple of rounds, like we mentioned, and he's gotten away from that. Now he's looking for one big shot. And Algeria keeps showing him different looks. Jabs to the stomach, jabs to the head. He hits him soft, he hits him fast. He hits him, it's so many different things and these are the different nuances that a good boxer can show you. But when Probodnikov makes its impact, it counts. And Algeria is bleeding from the mouth now in round number eight. Provodnikov landed that right hook that you called last round, Jim, right. to the body and, and the fight seemed to go out of Algeria for 15 or 20 seconds. Be well served to focus down there, it seems. If Provodnikov is to get a knockout, the target should be the ribcage. That's where he's going to chop the taller man down. Good left hand, good right hand by Algieri. Slips away along the ropes. Provodnikov has been lunging a little bit in the last couple of rounds. That makes it easier for Algeri to counter. That's right. Deep breath, baby, deep breath. Deep breath, you're looking great. Beautiful work. Beautiful work. Baby, you gotta stay low on those hooks. Continue to stay low on your hooks. Look at me. All good, baby. Look up there. All good. On my way, please. All right, I All good. Okay, so Chris. The sequence earlier that we spoke about where it looked like Algeri landed a big left hook. But here we see he landed a short, small jab, but it's the. It's the corner and how wet it is, you know, that caused uh, Provodnikov to slip. Clear slip, no punch. Let's go, let's go, Blue, let's go. Round nine of a scheduled 12. Chris Algieri runs out of the, se uh, the corner into the center of the ring. Ruslan Provodnikov called the Siberian Rocky, an important component of that nickname and that brand, if you will is that he came in as the underdog, at least against Alvarado, certainly not as a big favorite, and outperformed expectations both against Tim Bradley and against Alvarado. In this fight, he came in as the heavy favorite, 
and he has so far for the first time since people became aware of him not outperformed expectations Provodnikov. Provodnikov has two losses one of them was the very close unanimous decision loss in the Bradley fight the other stop, stop. was to Mauricio Herrera a skilled pure boxer with movement and speed who was able to get the better of Provodnikov somewhat in the same way that Algeri for some stretches in this fight has been able to do the same thing. Yeah, a good boxer with good movement, somebody who can take the punch of Provodnikov is definitely his kryptonite, and we're seeing that tonight. Uh, Provodnikov is being Provodnikov to a degree, but Algeri's not fully letting him be what he would like to be tonight. To your point earlier when I mentioned maybe even in a rematch, Tim Bradley, when it looked like Provodnikov was about to knock Algeri out, Bradley wouldn't be able to box because Provodnikov wouldn't let him. He's not trying to let Algeri box here. Algeri's just boxing. That's right. He's good under and over right there by Algeri. Provodnikov has a title. The recognized champion of the 140-pound weight class at this moment is American Danny Garcia. Although Garcia, in his last fight, fought Herrera, the man who beat Provodnikov a couple of years ago down in Puerto Rico. Many ringside observers and many watching on TV felt that Herrera deserved that decision. It went to Garcia. So difficult in boxing to tell exactly where a guy is in terms of his career development. Thunderous right hand by Provodnikov as Algeri, unaccountably, stood still in the corner. Because the sample size is so small. It's like trying to figure out who the best football teams are in the NFL after two weeks of the season. All we have to go by in Provodnikov since the Herrera fight in terms of name opponents are his last two fights. Has he made enormous improvement as it seemed? Or were circumstances just right? Or did he improve? And this is how good Algeria is. Yeah, I think that's more the case. I think Provodnikov is trained for this fight. He's improving. He's growing. And Algeria's just doing a, a really good job right now. I think it's that simple. Freddie Roach anticipated this was going to be a difficult fight for a while. It wasn't a difficult fight at first. It, and it became more difficult as the rounds progressed. Put him on the ropes, train him up, and put him, put him whack your body, and they hug your body, bug your head. Chebom, we'll stack the canate, but you might, but on the right corpus, left corpus. All good, baby. All good, baby. All good, baby. Come on. Deep breath, deep breath, deep breath. Chris, you're doing beautiful. Feel? Just a little lower, Chris, and let both hands go, baby. Here we see the kind of shots that Algeria's been landing on Provodnikov. Just a touch with the left hand and a decent right hand. It stops Provodnikov in his tracks and it gets his attention. Copy box numbers through nine. Provodnikov 151 out of 556, 27%. Algeri 230 out of 773, 30%. Algeri throwing more, landing more, landing at a higher connect percentage, but the impact not nearly the same as that which Ruslan Provodnikov is able to muster when he lands on Algeri. Algeri doesn't have big knockout power, but he hits not only hard enough to get respect, because Provodnikov is back on him, but when he hits got, uh, Provodnikov here, he's thrown with enough force to actually move Provodnikov's body back. So right. Provodnikov is then out of position to punch, even if he wants to. Steve, how do you have it through nine? Jim, I have it 88, 81 for Provodnikov. More than anything, judges wish that there was a magical mathematical formula that says that three light shots equals one hard shot or four light shots equals one hard shot. But there's no such formula. Judges just have to do their best based on their experience. I'm going with the harder, more effective shots. That's why I have Provodnikov up by seven. I think it would serve Provodnikov very well to keep trying to take a shot at that eye that's probably, if not fully shut, three quarters of the way shut on Algeri and hope that he can land a, a left hook underneath or over the top that Algeria doesn't see. Incidentally, a seven points sounds like a wide margin 
from the great Steve Weisfeld. Realize every round you, you, you change, if you think it's a close round, is a two-point swing because it's 10-9 the other way. So if you disagree with Steve by, let's say, two rounds, rather than it being a seven-point fight, it's a three-point fight. Much closer fight. The big insurance policy that Provodnikov has going for him as we debate the merits of scoring hard punches versus more frequent punches is that he knocked Algeri down twice in the first round, making that a 10-7 round. So it's been an uphill fight all the way since then for Chris Algeri. So if you disagree with Steve on two of those rounds, then you think Provodnikov is maybe one round ahead, and then with the big first round, has a, has a commanding lead. Provodnikov stalking, stalking. Algeri continuing to move. Just kind of feels like Algeri's punch output is dropping a little bit here in the late rounds. And I think he's still ahead of Provodnikov in terms of sheer volume. And oh, as absolutely. The, as the rounds go on, Provodnikov was heavier handed than Algeri. Hard right hand by Algeri as Provodnikov was leaning in. Doesn't need to get the same snap on his shots to generate power, and I think it actually favors Provodnikov as, as they both grow weary. Okay, it was way too close. We need a knockout here. Let's put the pressure on him. Right. Come on. Now, he's bobbing and weaving low. The uppercut's going to work, but you go with the uppercut and the hook. Chris, baby. creep on him and hit him and get delivered. Every time, yo, every time on him. And then go back to the jam. On your hooks, Chris, dip out. Stay low, chin down on your hooks, buddy. Keep letting those goddamn right hands go. We spoke a little bit earlier about the size of this ring. It's a small ring. It's an 18-foot ring, soft canvas. I tested it out myself earlier. But I was told that Algeri in Huntington, New York, at the arena that he fights at, he actually fights in a 16-foot ring. So that explains why he seems to be, you know, pretty comfortable in this smaller ring. So he's accustomed to finding his range in a tight space. Well, you heard Freddie Roach between rounds. He wants to leave nothing to chance. It's a little bit too close. We need a knockout. Then he asked for uppercuts, and we have not seen many of those from Provodnikov. In terms of Provodnikov's will and his punching power, and the fact that as the underdog, he performed the way he did against Tim Bradley and then, and then broke Mike Alvarado, who had such, seemed to have such indomitable will before Provodnikov. He's the Siberian Rocky. But in the context of this fight, it's actually Algeri who's the Rocky. Not in terms of his style, but the position. He comes in as the local kid. The nice story, but the huge underdog who has no real chance, and he performs like this. Two very nice left hands for Algeri. A hook and then a jab. Both of them landing, momentarily slowing Provodnikov's progress. And he does it with an eye and a nose now that looks like uh, Sylvester Stallone had makeup people working on him for a couple hours. And I think what the fans at home and the fans in this arena are seeing are those intangibles we talked about. It's something you can't put your finger on, you can't measure, but this kid has made up his mind that tonight it doesn't matter what Provodnikov's reputation is, and you run into fighters like that where they don't care about the press. They just know that tonight is my night and I'm going to show up. And I personally feel like Algeria's winning this fight. I don't know by how far, but you got to respect the performance up until this point. But Provodnikov is still very dangerous. I can see why you would think that. I don't know that I agree. Um, but I may be influenced by the fact that Algeria's face is falling apart and and every time Provodnikov hits him, it's graphic. Well, looking at Algeri's right eye, I'm reminded of Antonio Margarito in Dallas against Manny Pacquiao. It's an exterior look. Tells us nothing about what's going on behind the eyelid, but I'm interested that the doctors have been brave enough on his behalf to let him fight this far into the fight with that right eye. Yeah, and I think when you look at punches landed, in my opinion, uh, sheer output, 
and even body language. I think that Algieri is showing that, you know, if he's not in command, he's definitely holding his own in this fight. And, and he's landing clean, crisp punches, Algieri. And if he, were, if he were less competitive, if he weren't able to beat as often as he is on the same page with Provodnikov, probably the doctors would not have allowed him to go this far. I think the eye is completely shut right now. So this is a horror show, that right eye. Amazing that he's fighting this well with that eye in addition to everything else. Nice deep breath. Beautiful boxing. Beautiful. It's beautiful, baby. That's how you do your hands, baby. You gotta keep doing that, baby. Both hands, Chris. Both hands. Come on, deep breath. A little water? Chris, look right at me. Look right at me. Both man. hands, buddy. He's all good, baby. Boxing, no pain. You know he's gonna go in there. It's nice, don't lose the foot, you go away. Let him go in there, don't go in the upper cut hard. Feel it, but go through the flower. All right. The last round, okay? Nothing to the end, okay? Go all the way, go all the way. You wouldn't have thought much back in round one about Chris Algieri's chances of making it to the 12th round. But in a display of courage and skill and talent, he has made it this far in a fight basically dominated by the punching power of Ruslan Pravotnikov said earlier that he has to, Algeria has to make this a battle of skill, not will. But it takes tremendous will to turn it into a battle of skill, especially the way this, the fight started. Yeah, he hasn't broken down physically, mentally, emotionally, like I think providing a call from Freddie Roach possibly expected and even banked on. And that's why this fight is so difficult for Provodnikov right now. I think when Provodnikov and Roach go back and look at the tape of the fight, they might ask themselves, why not more body punching? Why not more sustained damage to the body in the middle rounds in particular? I think part of it is neglect from Provodnikov, and the other part you have to give credit to uh, Algeri. Provodnikov needs his feet set before he can land those power shots, and Algeri moves just enough laterally. He bumps him. He does whatever he has to do to keep the big puncher just off, just off balance enough to, to not be able to land those shots. That's called subtle craft, and he has it. And once again, this is a guy with zero amateur experience, not one amateur fight. Stop, stop. No, his professional kickboxing career is what amounted to his amateur career. That's right. Provodnikov's trying to take advantage of that closed eye by bringing something big up from the bottom where Algeri doesn't see it coming, and Algeri somehow has a sixth sense and is avoiding it. You can feel it. You don't always need to see a punch coming as a fighter. You can sense it, you can feel it, and you kind of know when to duck and get out the way. And frankly, it's that damaged eye which might have accounted for the absence of body punching in the middle rounds. Provodnikov may have been targeting the eye so consciously that he lost track of the mandate to go to the body. Now, Jerry's been in the ring, obviously, for 12 rounds with Provodnikov right now, so he's picked up on a few things, certain telegraphs and uh, things that, you know, Provodnikov will do. He may be a hitch here, a hitch there, and he knows when that big left hook is coming. That's a smart think on his feet fighter, Algeri. I think the boxing world knows who Algeri is tonight. An impressive show in its way for both fighters. But who won? And there's 20 seconds left. <laughs> That's the question. In a way, Algeri wins no matter what, and Ruslan loses a little bit. I agree with that. No matter what the official verdict is. Well, Steve Weisfeld's, Weisfeld's unofficial scorecard is going to look relatively one-sided. And maybe all three official judges' scorecards will be as well. But the chance exists that via the interpretation question, four punches versus harder punches, that one or more of the judges may have it closer than Weisfeld does. Here are the two knockdowns in round number one, which serve at this moment as Provodnikov's insurance policy. 
and could George, possibly turn out to be his margin of victory in the fight. It's like winning three 10-9 rounds when you score two knockdowns in the first round. Steve, let's look at your unofficial scorecard now as it ended up. Jim, I have it 117, 109 for Vodnikov. As much as I admire Algeria's performance, and it's a lot, I still have to go with Provodnikov's harder shots and more effective shots. Who are the three official judges? The three judges, the first judge is Max DeLuca from California. He's been judging for 16 years and is one of the best judges out there. He had Marquez ahead of Alvarado by eight points and that was a fine score. We also saw him judge Cotto Martinez last week. Tom Schreck had Lara over Trout by seven, which was a good score. Besides being a top judge, Tom works full time with people with autism. He's also the author of five novels. He also judged Cotto Martinez last week. Tom's a busy man. Don Trella is an experienced world-class judge from Connecticut. He had Solomon over Stern by eight in their rematch in Germany, which was a very good score. No home cooking for Stern in that fight. The grinning Provodnikov in one corner. Miss Algeria in the other corner with that grotesque right eye. But it was that way in round one, and he fought through to the finish. And now he trembled in Algeria's corner. He's gonna pick the fighter up and carry him around the ring for a small ovation from his fan base. Scorecards are still being tabulated. Algeria exchanges pleasantries with those in Provodnikov's corner. Provodnikov goes across the ring to commune with his fans. Part of what's going on here is the experiment of trying to build a Russian fighter into a Brooklyn star with the outreach appeal to residents of nearby Brighton Beach, a community which has more than 100,000 Russian-American citizens. This decision is going to be very interesting. Even if you disagree with Steve Weisfeld on four rounds and you change them to Algeria, it's a draw because of that three-point first round for Provodnikov. There's Marvin Samodio in front of Provodnikov. There's Algeria's brother talking on the phone to someone. There's the right eye. And even then, they were, they were few and far between, and he was right. swinging wide um, and catching me in the end of the punches. To tell you the truth, the only shot that really hurt me was the first one. And it was, the, it was more my eye. Right. I took the knee the second time because I wasn't sure what was going on with the eye. I was up to swelling, my lip went numb, and I was like, uh oh. And now Michael Buffer has the tabulation of the official scores. So let's go up to him to hear what's the final result of the fight. Ladies and gentlemen, here at Barclays Center, Brooklyn, New York, we go to the scorecard. Max DeLuca has it, 117-109 for Pervodnikov. Tom Schreck scores it, 114-112 for Algeri. Don Trella scores it. Same score, 114 to 112, to the winner by split decision. And new, undefeated WBO light welterweight champion of the world, the fighting collegian. It took so long to tabulate the scores. A stunning result in Brooklyn, where Chris Algieri weathers two knockdowns in the first round and a completely shut right eye, and winds up getting, from the official judges, a generous split decision victory over Ruslan Bravadnikov. Algieri now the holder of a 140-pound world title belt. 
Andre Ward, your thoughts on that decision? Jim, I got to watch it again. Uh, obviously, the you know, the, the early deficit that Algeria had to overcome was very difficult, but I personally felt like he put on a boxing clinic for the majority of this fight. I got to watch it again to see if he officially won, but I felt like, you know, I'm not shocked by this decision. I put it like that. So in other words, you had a sense, as I did all along, that official scores might not be as wide as what Steve Weisfeld was giving us unofficially. Yeah, and I think I said that, but, you know, to Steve's credit, there was a judge that felt the way he felt. So it just depends, like he said, on how a judge is viewing the fight. Max DeLuca duplicated Weisfeld's unofficial scorecard. The other two scorers both wound up at 114-112 for Chris Algieri, Don Trella, and Tom Schreck. And you see the celebration that's going on among Chris Algieri's supporters. And now Max Kellerman stands by with the winner, Chris Algieri. What did you just ask me? So did that answer some of your questions, Max? And then some. Congratulations on a sensational performance and an improbable win after that first round. You're on the deck, your eye is closing. What's going through your mind when moments into the fight, you're knocked down? You know, Max, um, this has been a surreal week for me. <laughs> me and my, uh, my, my trainer almost got into a car accident earlier in the week. Someone actually drove us off the road. And it was funny, my heart rate didn't even go up. I felt like that walking in here today and at that moment when I was on the deck. My heart rate didn't even go up. You look like you got into a, a car wreck, but you got off the deck to box extremely well. Did you think you were winning the fight? Yeah, I did. I did. I, um, even the shots I was going to hit with in the first you know, four rounds, they were few and far between. They were big, but they were lunging shots. He caught me on the end of the punches. Really, the only shot that hurt me was that first shot. How were you able to do what you did with one eye for most of the fight? I could actually see pretty well out of the eye until about round eight. Um, and then round 12, I was fucking blind. Excuse my, excuse me. I was blind in the 12th. And yet you were able to avoid a lot of those hooks that he seemed to try to bring up from nowhere so you couldn't see them. How'd you do that? I, I kind of anticipated them. I, I, I saw him coming forward, and, um, you know, I, I knew the eye looked probably, I haven't seen it, I'm seeing it right now. I know it probably looked pretty bad. The Ruslan would probably looked like a nice juicy steak for him. So uh, I saw in his eyes when he was ready to throw that, that, that left hook, so I was already able to evade. Okay, working class kid, lives with his family on Long Island, no amateur background, fights Ruslan Provodnikov, gets off the deck twice in the first round, with your eye like this and goes on to win, what did you just show the boxing world? I showed the boxing world who Chris Algieri is. And what does he have planned? What do you want going forward? It's funny, I have not thought past this day or this moment for months. I don't even know what, you know, June 15th even it looks like. So I guess I'll uh, get some rest, ice my eye and see what's up. How does that feel, by the way, before we get to Ruslan, with that strap around your shoulder, here in Brooklyn, close enough to your hometown. <laughs> Can't get much closer. As Smiling on HBO. As heavy as this damn thing is, can't even feel it. <laughs> thanks, and thanks for a spectacular showing. Ruslan, you started extremely well. What happened after that? Просто, видать, зарядился на удар уже. Алжири просто приспособился. Ну, не мой конек. Бегунки не мой конек, я уже сказал, просто не смог приспособиться. Это тяжело было. Все-таки я люблю бойцов, которые рубятся. Он же, видите, просто тыкал, бегал. В принципе, мне казалось, что я вел. Ну, получилось так, как получилось. Он выиграл, надо это признать, поэтому я ему пожал руку. I, f I felt like after the knockdown, I was trying to really land a big punch. You know, I have to admit, uh, runners are not my style. You know, the, he's just jabbing and touching me. I can't feel any of that, but it's not my style. You know, I like guys that stand there and fight me. This is the worst style for me, and I thought I was close in the fight, but it happened the way it happened. So are you saying that given that reality, that bo guys who move in box can give you problems, you would rather not fight them and instead 
fight fighters who are more to your liking, more kind of come forward fighters with whom you can make big action fights? То есть ты говоришь, что может быть тебе лучше встречаться не с такими бегунами, а с такими, которые готовы с тобой драться, и с ними будет получаться более зрелищно. Ну, я уже сразу говорил, что это не мой конек, да, то есть мне больше нравятся боксеры, с которыми можно драться. Ну, вы видели, он весь, он весь бой отбегал, оттыкал просто. Ну, так что, ну что ему надо сказать, молодец. I said it before, it's, it's, it's just not my style. He just ran and just touched me. You know, he just jabbed me and touched me. He didn't, I didn't feel any of that, but obviously I have trouble with that style. You know, I like, like you said, I like guys that are in front of me and fighting me. He, he did a good job. The most important is, I think, as I promised, I gave a very exciting fight, and I think the fans were not sleeping in the seats, and I did what I promised. Um, you know, the title and everything, that's, you know, the judges made their decision, it's up to them. Thank you, Ruslan. All right, thank you, Max Kellerman, and now we'll show you the numbers which will have to serve as an explanation for the logic by which two official judges found Chris Algieri as the winner of the fight. He lands 83 more punches than Probotnikov. He throws 217 more punches than Probotnikov. He lands at a 3% higher connect percentage than Probotnikov, who clearly landed by far the harder punches throughout the fight. CompuBox numbers on power punches. Probotnikov landing 164, Algieri lands 13 more throws seven fewer, lands at a 3% higher connect percentage. Chris Algieri winds up with a split decision win. So now Algieri had a shocking split decision win, the beginnings of a brand new national fan base, and another unexpected opportunity to face off against one of the planet's two most famous prize fighters for a seven-figure purse. It's a story that makes Cinderella seem like a gritty, realistic tale. Manny Pacquiao is heavily favored. Chris Algieri couldn't care less. It'll come your way live from Macau the evening of November 22 on HBO Pay-Per-View.